Welcome back everyone. As you probably guessed by the title of the video, this is what we're going over today. This is the Garmin Tactics Delta Solar with applied ballistics uh, watch. So they offer this in a number of different models. They offer just the Garmin Tactics Delta, the Garmin Tactics Delta with solar, and the Garmin Tactics Delta with solar and applied ballistics. Uh, that is the one that we have here. So it's sort of like the granddaddy of the Tactics series of watches. Now, a viewer actually asked me about this, I don't know, five or six months ago. And then right after that, a swarm of viewers asked me about it. So that I'm guessing is when it was released. And I got it in a couple months after that. We've had it in for about three months now. The folks at Garmin did send it out for this review, just full disclosure. Um, and we're gonna go over the features of it, at least most of the important ones that I think will apply to my audience. I'm gonna try to keep this video relatively short. I could literally do a video probably two hours long in this watch and not go through all the features. It has so many features. It's just absolutely insane and it's customizable in ways that are virtually limitless as well. So anyway, let's get into the details and then at the end wrap it up what I think of it. One of the first things you'll notice about the watch when you get it in is that it certainly is not small, that's for sure. So what we have here is the Garmin Phoenix 5 X with the sapphire lens. Just for size comparison, you guys can see they're both fairly large watches. So just know that you are going to have a large watch on your wrist if you go with this. That said, a lot of people like that, myself included. I am a fan. It's also relatively thick. It's 15 millimeters thick. And you can see basically we have our sapphire glass. So for folks that don't know, sapphire glass is extremely uh, scratch resistant. It would be almost impossible to scratch it. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I haven't found anything that scratched it yet. And I've been using uh, Garmin watches with sapphire lenses for years. Um, so there is that. The outer bezel here, this portion, is steel, as is the backing here, steel. And both of those have a DLC or diamond-like coating on there, which for folks who are familiar with firearms, you guys are gonna know this is a super, super durable uh, finish. And it also add, adds some uh, corrosion resistant properties to the metal, so that is nice. Then in between there, we have a polymer type of material on the back here. You guys can see this is where we have the battery charging port. And of course, this one is solar as well. So it charges uh, via the sun, which we'll get into as well. And then we have this thing here, which is our heart rate monitor, as well as pulse oximeter. The watch has five different function buttons. So up here, that one is going to be the light if you just press it once. So you can cover that up there. You guys can see Press it and the light will go on or off and illuminate whatever is on there. You can also press and hold it and that will give you your menu button here. You can power off. Uh, you can toggle through to the different apps there with it. This is going to be your down button. This is your up button. So we can go through. You guys can see there that's saying it's going to give me 10 days with the battery saving off, which is what I have it in now. However, you can hit this button right here and go into battery saver. That's going to extend it uh, a good bit. However, it disables some of the features on it. So you also have music. You can go into that menu there and add your own music. This watch itself has 32 gigs of memory, so you can add it on there so that way you don't have to worry about carrying around an iPod or something like that. Uh, wallet, that is to use Garmin Pay if you choose to do that. Timers, there's a myriad of timers, watches, uh, excuse me, timers, alarms, countdowns, really anything you can think about like that is in there as well. Stealth mode. So this is actually very important for folks who are in the military. What this does is it disables any type of connectivity. So turns off all Bluetooth signal, period. Turns off all GPS signal, period. Um, so that way, if you, you know, if you're worried about be being tracked by, say, an enemy force, like a near peer enemy force, uh, you can do that. You can disable all that and not have to worry about it. Uh, save locations. This is used to mark locations along waypoints when you're navigating. Um, of course, different time zones, you can set that up. Night vision mode, this is again also very important. Um, so it does work. Obviously I have night vision, we've tested this. Um, when the watch is not, basically when you don't hit your light there, um, it's pretty dim. However, under night vision, it basically glows. And then if you think about it as well, our pulse ox oximeter in there is giving off that signal. And uh, what that's doing underneath your wrist is just glowing constantly under night vision. So it turns the heart rate monitor and the pulse oximeter off, and then also basically makes the screen so dim that with your naked eye, you can't see anything, but through your nods, you can see it perfectly well. And that's not just time. Again, that's navigation away points and those sorts of things. Uh, do not disturb, obviously you can set that. So that way, if you have it hooked up, say to your phone or 
something along those lines. Um, you can turn that off if it rings. And then we have our applied ballistics, which we'll get into uh, here as well. I suppose we'll just do it right there. Um, you can also just go through different ways to access the menu. But applied ballistics here, they have tons and tons of features going on. I have a video demonstrating how it works over at my B channel. So I didn't want to actually show any shooting in this video because I realized if I do, uh, it will be demonetized and flagged. So that way YouTube will never show it. Um, and of course, the purpose of making a video is to have people see it, right? That's kind of the point. Um, so there is that. Uh, but with the ballistics mode, some overviews is that it connects to any kind of Garmin sensor out there that you can think about, um, whether they be like the Tempe sensor to get accurate temperature data. Um, it does have a temperature gauge right up here on it as well. But if that's on your wrist or in your pocket or in a jacket or something like that, that is going to impact it. So if you want, really want to get precise uh, temperature, you can connect it to the Tempe and that will do that. It has built-in atmospherics in terms of uh, air pressure, altitude, those sorts of things. And from what I've been told by a buddy of mine who is a jump master, which we'll get into here in just a second, the altimeter is very, very accurate. Um, you can also connect this to a Bluetooth Glazer rangefinder, which is super, super important. So as you can see here, um, I'll turn the light on, make it a little brighter here. This is just a target out at 360 yards. This is what I used as an example um, when we were out at the range doing that video I referenced earlier. Um, this is using, I believe, uh, M855, and that is our windage elevation using a mill reticle. You can set it up for mill or MOA. And I should add that this has all of the data that the Applied Ballistics app has in it. Many people are familiar with that because they can uh, put that data into a Kestrel. This watch does everything a Kestrel does, literally with the exception of reading wind. So other than that, it does everything your Kestrel can do. So that certainly is good in my opinion. Um, but yeah, so you can hook this up via Bluetooth to any number of laser rangefinders, then just use the laser rangefinder to designate a target and it will automatically give you your holdover. So of course, this is what we have here, 2.38 in terms of holdover for this particular target in terms of mills. And again, if you just change the point that you focus on with your laser rangefinder, again, if it's Bluetooth connected, it will automatically calculate that super, super fast for you. So that is just absolutely fantastic in my opinion. Um, it has a huge bullet database that the Applied Ballistic app has. However, you can modify it even further. Um, you can create your own range cards here. Um, so basically, and you can, get everything customized out to different distances for different types of rounds. Again, it's populating as you guys can see there. And then this is our back button here. Um, but you can do that, you can make different targets. So if you had say like 10 targets at different distances, you can plug those in and automatically just bounce from target to target to target. So that's for target one, target two would be a different distance. And you can do that, we'll go back and go back into that. You can change your environmentals if you want to. You can change your target if you want to. You can change in here <clears throat> the different bullet properties. Again, you can manually change your twist rate as well. You can change your barrel length. You can change your velocity. But it does have the baselines, again, from the Applied Ballistics app for just about any round out there that you're going to encounter as a shooter. Before I move out of the ballistics portion of this, one thing I just wanted to point out is that all of these fields, and this is gonna be true for basically everything I talk about with this watch, all of these fields are customizable. You can change them out to a different metric if you want to. Again, just check your owner's manual. It's pretty simple and straightforward to do that. Um, but we're gonna go back here and just kind of work through some of the basics of it. These are your favorites here, if you press the action button there. So we just went through applied ballistics. You can set it up for kayaking. It's gonna give you different data in terms of your speed, uh, heart rate, VO2 max, all of those sorts of things. Tactical mode, um, it does have the jump master mode, which again, a uh, good buddy of mine is a jump master and a three-star command. He's a master sergeant and uh, he is the air NCO. So as you can imagine, anybody who's been in an airborne unit at a three-star command, you know, all he does basically is pull jump master duties and uh, schedule jumps and coordinate jumps and those sorts of things. And basically he's told me that he uses this almost exclusively for everything, uh, marking waypoints along the way. Uh, like I said, the altimeter, he said is spot on. And uh, they also, again, for jump, for folks that don't know, 
uh, when you're conducting airborne operations, basically you're flying into a certain location. Uh, they give you different indicators as you get closer, you know, one minute, hook up, all of that sort of stuff. That's for static line anyway. Um, so giving out those commands, you can pre-mark those waypoints um, on your actual, you know, maps that are in here. And that way the jump master has a better idea and a better chance of not dropping folks off over the wrong DZ, because that definitely does happen. Uh, I've never been a jump master, but I definitely was a paratrooper and I've seen that for sure. Um, and then you can also mark waypoints uh, on the ground. So basically once you get to your, um, you know, your landing zone, you can mark different waypoints. So say like a rally point to meet up with uh, the rest of your soldiers or something like that, and just different key points to hit once you're there. Additionally, if you're doing halo operations, you can use that to move throughout the air to get to your point. Um, because obviously if you're doing halo, you have the ability to navigate while you're in the air, which certainly is kind of cool. So they have the track me mode. There's a lot of stuff in there. It's just basically biometrics. Um, navigate, ton of stuff here too. Uh, this does come preloaded with all of the public uh, land maps that are out there. You can also add any type of map that you can think of on there. If you want to add like, you know, topo maps, you can do that. You can navigate via MGRS and it gives you 10 digit grids or you can use lat long, whichever you want. Preference, you set it up however you want to. And uh, again, you can set different points of interest. Is say you're a hunter and you go into the woods, you want to mark that point so that way you can actually find your way back out. That's nice. Um, and you can mark it via, again, the different systems like MGRS, or you can mark it right on the actual map itself. Um, it gives you different info around. One thing I don't like about it though, um, and again, you guys can see all the different saved locations and all of those types of things, coordinates. Um, but one thing, let me get, just kind of give you an idea. So one thing that I wish it had was the ability to move it around on the actual screen with a touch screen, but you can't. You gotta kinda just move it manually with the buttons. It's not as convenient as it otherwise could be, but the map features on this are fantastic for sure. And then map here, that's where you can set all the different configurations of your map. You can use different types of inputs for it. They also have, of course, all the different activities that most smartwatches have. So running, it'll give you your pace, the distance you go, the VO2 max that you're at, uh, biking, swimming, strength, and walking um, and then of course the history will be there as well uh, when you go into it but to get to any of these different modes basically you're just going to click on it say walk it's going to give you your gps location as soon as it finds it which this one already did um, it's in green and if you use a location that's very similar to the last time you used it it'll likely go right to green because that's the default and it's just going to verify those satellites are there and go to it if not it's going to be red until it finds it and then it'll turn to green once it gets all the satellite connections it needs. There's a couple other things on the map and navigation that I wanted to touch on before we get out of that menu. So number one is gonna be sight and go. What that is, is it's compass. I don't know why it doesn't just say compass, <laughs> but it doesn't. Anyway, it's super, super accurate, guys. Um, I have a Lenzatic military style compass and basically it's spot on, uh, very, very accurate. You absolutely can trust it. Again, though, like anything with navigation, you got, kind of got to know what you're doing and uh, make sure you know your, your, you know your uh, declination and all of that stuff for your area because it's going to change. So oh, there's the other one I wanted to get to is points of interest. So um, this is on there as well. You can put in what cities are around you. And then if you want to see you know, what restaurants are around you, uh, gas station, hotels, all of that stuff is there. All of this is automatically in there. It comes from the factory with all this data in there. And if you want to, you can update it um, using the uh, USB on your computer and just update it to get the most current, you know, gas stations in the US and all of those sorts of things added into there. And pretty convenient in my opinion. So I know we skimmed through a lot of the stuff on there. And again, that's just because this video could be hours long. And a lot of the things that this watch does isn't interesting to a lot of you out there. Some of it is, some of it isn't. So I just kind of wanted to give you an overview. But one thing I really do want to touch on before, you know, closing everything out is the fact that this watch gives you fantastic fitness data, right? So uh, you can actually obviously hook it up to your phone as well and you can track metrics a long time. It can give you advice on how to improve different things, get your VO2 max better, uh, get your cardio better, get your strength better. It tracks all of that really, really well in a way that uh, really nothing could do 10 years ago, never mind something this small. Um, it's really fantastic at that. And like I said earlier, about 
different widgets and what's showing up and what's not showing up. Uh, you can configure this watch face any different way you want. They have apps out there which will let you make your own. You can do all kinds of different stuff in terms of the interface that you see here on the watch. So uh, there is that. Um, one thing that I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering about is price point. It ain't cheap, as you can imagine. So right now, this particular one, which again is their highest end of the Garmin Tactics Delta Solar <laughs> Applied Ballistics, is coming in right around $1,400. So when you think about comparing it to like a Rolex or something like that, it's cheap. When you think about comparing it to like the Phoenix 5X Sapphire that we just showed you, it's expensive, right? So do you need it? Is it worth it to you? Really? I mean, again, that's just up to you guys, but it has some features that are just truly impressive for the first like month and a half. Every day, I felt like I was learning a different feature on it, just using it going about my day. Um, so yeah, there's a ton of stuff this watch can do. Whether it's worth it to you is ultimately up to you guys, but so far I've been very, very impressed with it. Um, again, price point is what it is. If you're watching this three or four years from now, it might be less, but right now that's what they're coming in at. There will be a link down below in the video description if you guys are looking to pick one up. If you guys have questions about it, different capabilities, those sorts of things, definitely check out Garmin's website first. But if you do that and you still have a question, you can comment down below in the video uh, comments. But if you have, have a specific question that you need to have answered, the best place to reach me is over at my Facebook page. Uh, I do get back to everybody over there. Sometimes it takes me a little bit because there's hundreds of thousands of you and only one of me, but I do actually see the messages. Whereas elsewhere that I post content, I don't always see them. So I can't always get back to folks. So there is that. If you like this video and you're new here, hit the subscribe button. If you've already subscribed, make sure you hit the notification bell, hit the like button, share all of those sorts of things. They do help the algorithm. They help this channel grow and this video get more views, which I appreciate regardless. I appreciate all of you guys watching and I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.